Now that Snowflake has acquired Streamlit, database users have a new way to share their insights. Snowflake is a popular data platform, but why was it named Snowflake? Actual snowflakes are born in the cloud, and the Snowflake platform was built from scratch specifically for the cloud. The original name of Streamlit was Streamlet, but one of the founder's friends mistyped it and they liked the misspelled version better. The stream part of the name indicates that their software quickly streams data to web apps, and the let part evokes memories of applets from the 1990s. Like Java applets, streamlets are small apps that perform simple functions. The spin for the new name was that lit represented lighting up or illuminating a solution. But to the millennials from Google who founded streamlit, the word lit is also a slang term that means exciting or cool. In this acquisition announcement, Snowflake posited the idea that coupling their data platform with Streamlit's app framework would make Snowflake data more accessible. Streamlit is an amazing success story. It was launched in October of 2019 as an open source project. In June of 2020, they received $21 million in their first round of VC funding followed by a $35 million round in April of 2021. And in March of 2022, they were acquired by Snowflake for $800 million. So what is Streamlit? It's an open source framework that enables data analysts to transform Python scripts into interactive web apps. Streamlit is a free library that hides the complexity of building JavaScript UIs. It's a cloud enabler for those who couldn't deploy their insights to the web because they lack full stack skills. After you create your analysis with Python, you call Streamlit functions to display widgets and graphs in a web app. It's an easy way to build and share data apps, to demonstrate algorithms, play with models, and visualize data. I'll explain further with a few screenshots from three apps built by folks in the Streamlit community. This app uses a text classifier to perform a sentiment analysis on a group of tweets. You enter a word that must appear in each tweet, and the Twitter API is called to retrieve a relevant sample. Scrolling down, we can see that each tweet was processed by an NLP algorithm and an overall polarity score was computed. With this app, you upload an image of a bird and it is fed through a convolutional neural network to predict the species. Here, I uploaded a photo of a bald eagle and scrolling down, we can see that the app classified it correctly with a high level of confidence. This is an educational app that can help teach your colleagues about analytics. Based on the type of analysis a user selects from the sidebar, data is extracted from a Google Sheets document and the user can interact with each graph's parameters. So I showed examples of Streamlit apps that source their data from a REST API, from an uploaded file, and from Google Docs. But I really wanted to see how easy it is to create a Streamlit app that gets its data from Snowflake so I created my own. I started by populating the Snowflake table with synthetic data that represents the number of production jobs that ran each day, aggregated by run frequency. Then I created this Streamlit app. First, a user enters the name of their Snowflake database, their Snowflake schema, and their Snowflake table. Then they enter a title for the chart that will be created, and a name for the PNG file that will be saved locally. I kept the charts width, height, and color palette defaults, and then I clicked the Create Chart button. The app reads data from Snowflake and generates a chart and table. When I scroll down, you can see the rest of the output. And here's the PNG file that was saved, so I can import it into a PowerPoint slide. 
I have a second table that doesn't contain counts for daily jobs, and I'll use it to show the app's flexibility. I also change the color palette, and when I click Create Chart, the new output is generated and saved to this file. I created my app much like a typical data scientist would. First, I created the backend code in a Jupyter Notebook. It's a Python script with a parameterized function that generates the bar chart and table combo graphic. After my script was working in Jupyter, I copied the Python code into PyCharm and added calls to streamlit functions to build my app's front end. Here's a bird's eye view of my entire Python program, squished down and blocked out. The streamlit code in red is all I had to add to make my analysis appear in an interactive app that can be shared on the web. I must admit that it was very easy to do. But it's going to be even easier to develop and deploy apps on Snowflake's secure and governed platform once their streamlit integration features go live. Just like how you can click Create on the Snowflake UI to build a new schema, table, or view within a database, you'll be able to create a Streamlit app container with just a click of a button. Then you'll be able to write your Python script on the left side of the Snowflake UI and see your app run on the right side. So, no need to use other editors or IDEs like Jupyter or PyCharm. After you've developed and tested your Streamlit app, you can share it with colleagues by simply clicking the Share button and sending them your app's URL. The analytics community has overwhelmingly chosen Python as their preferred tool, so Snowflake's acquisition of Streamlit makes good sense as they position themselves to grow in the analytics sector.